welcome to the session uh, we are going to discuss in the session the use of uh, <coughs> Hessler chart for solving the uh, transient conduction problems in the previous sessions on uh, lumped system analysis we discussed that the temperature is only the function of time and not the function of uh, space because of uh, the assumption that the internal temperature gradient or internal resistance due to conduction is neglected and hence across the, <coughs> the solid body there is no temperature gradient hence the temperature across the body is only the function of time. Now we are going to discuss uh, the transient conduction in large plane walls, long cylinders and spheres with the spatial effects. We will consider the, the variation of uh, temperature with the time and position in one dimensional problems such as those associated with the large plane wall, long cylinder and the sphere uh, and also the assumption made here is uh, that the uh, there is no <coughs> internal uh, heat generation in the, the body. Uh, here we are considering uh, infinite uh, long slabs where heat uh, flow only in uh, one direction that is in the x direction and because of the symmetry the thickness of the wall we assumed as a, assumed it as 2L. Uh, similarly for the cylinder <coughs> the radius uh, varies from 0 to outer radius R0 similarly in the, the sphere. So in this case uh, temperature gradient within the body because of uh, the conduction resistance is not neglected hence the temperature obviously across the body is the function of time and the space uh, in both the see in all the cases we assume that the body is at initial temperature ti and it is suddenly immersed or exposed to the environment whose temperature is t infinity and the convective heat transfer coefficient h so this uh, <coughs> figure uh, depicts the transient temperature profiles in a plane wall exposed to convection from its surface for initial temperature greater than the t infinity that means the heat is always flowing from the body to the, the surrounding in the figure you can observe that the Ti initially when time T is equal to 0 and uh, environmental temperature T infinity. When this body is uh, suddenly immersed in the uh, environment, obviously the temperature uh, within the body keep changing. So when time T is equal to T1, you can see the some portion of the, the profile is uh, still flat to represent initial temperature Ti but uh, very much nearer to the <coughs> surface of the body the temperature variation exists from uh, a flat play of flat uh, <coughs> a portion to the uh, exterior the earth surface. When time T is equal to T2 you can observe the temperature uh, profile within the body is uh, parabolic uh, symmetric at the center that means the maximum uh, temperature at the center and uh, the temperature keep on reduce as it moves towards the surface. Similarly when time t is equal to t3 the temperature start decaying but the observation still uh, 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 can be noticed here the temperature at the, the center is uh, maximum and it is keep on decreasing as towards uh, the, the surface and if you keep this body for a long time for example t tends to infinity then the initial temperature of the body approaches to the environment 
temperature T infinity because uh, when T is equal to or uh, T tends to infinity the body is in thermal equilibrium with the environment hence T i is equal to T infinity. <coughs> now in order to solve the, the problem for the one dimensional heat conduction equation without uh, heat generation we have the governing differential equation dou square t by dou x square that is equal to 1 by alpha dou t by dou t alpha you know that is the thermal diffusivity of the <coughs> body dou square t by dou x square represent the spatial uh, variations hence it is the second order differential equation so in order to uh, while solving the <coughs> the differential equation so obviously you need two boundary conditions uh, to to solve two constants uh, say for example c1 and c2 so one boundary condition at the center of the body at the symmetric plane at x is equal to 0 dou t by dou x is equal to 0 so at x is equal to 0 dou t by dou, uh, dou x is equal to 0 in the sense so this uh, plane or the middle plane where the temperature profile is not changing that means the slope of the temperature is not changing because of the symmetry therefore dou t by dou x is equal to 0 or you can also assume that the middle plane of the body has uh, the insulating uh, the plane <clears throat> and the second boundary condition when x is equal to l that means at the surface and uh, <coughs> you know that at the surface whatever the heat being conducted through the body must be equal to heat convected into the uh, fluid media by convection so that means conduction is equal to the convection and the and in the governing equation right hand side you have dou t by dou t so obviously it is first order differential equation with respect to time therefore one initial conditions were required so it is, that is at t is equal to 0 your temperature is equal to <coughs> so t a we are always interested to express this dimensional differential equation the dimensional boundary conditions and initial conditions in a non-dimensional form. The most uh, <coughs> advantage of expressing this in a non-dimensional form that whatever the equations in the dimensional form you are getting, so that is irrespective of the type of material. That means the same graph or the same non-dimensional numbers can be used either for aluminium or for copper or for steel etc etc that is the the beauty of expressing the variables in non dimensional form so in non dimensionalization we have assumed here the linear dimension in the <coughs> non dimensional form as capital x is equal to x by l where l is nothing but the half the thickness here and non-dimensional temperature we always uh, define like uh, uh, T of T minus T infinity divided by T i minus T infinity. Obviously, this is the non-dimensional. And if you substitute these into the differential equations uh, and the boundary conditions, we get a dou square T, the dou square theta by dou x square is equal to L square by alpha into dou theta by dou t differential equation in the non-dimensional non form and similarly the boundary condition at the <coughs> surface is going to be a dou theta of 1t divided by dou x is equal to hl by k theta of 1t 1 means at the surface when x by l is equal to 1 so therefore x by l is 1 is nothing but the, the surface where hl by k we know uh, this is non-dimensional number which is called as <coughs> biot number which is called as the biot number so in here you can observe the time t still we have not expressed in the non-dimensional form 
सपोज यू एक्सप्रेस दिस टाइम आलसो इन इन नॉन डायमेंशनल फॉर्म देन यूजिंग द नॉन डायमेंशनल टाइम हैज अल्फा डिवाइड्ड बाय एल स्क्वायर व्हिच इज आलसो नथिंग बट फोर इयर्स नंबर यू नो दैट फोर इयर्स नंबर इज द नॉन डायमेंशनल टर्म एंड दिस इफ यू अगेन सब्स्टिट्यूट बैक टू दिस इक्वेशन सो देन द Uh, dimensionless differential equation becomes dou square theta by dou x square is equal to dou theta by dou tau tau is also nothing but the four years number remember that and correspondingly the boundary conditions becomes uh, dou theta by dou x zero tau x is equal to zero that means at the center line and similarly at the surface So dou theta by dou x is equal to minus biot number into theta uh, of one tau, and uh, dimensionless initial condition becomes theta of x zero zero means when time t is equal to zero, theta of x zero is equal to one. So you can see in the non-dimensional temperature when uh, time t is equal to zero. T of x t is equal to T i. Therefore, T i minus T infinity divided by T i minus T infinity will be equal to one initially. So, <coughs> originally, in the sense, in the earlier uh, um, or in the original heat conduction problem, we saw the governing equation is given by this, and uh, initial equation, initial uh, Condition is given by this, and the boundary conditions one at the middle plane, and one at the surface. So, looking at these uh, parameters, we can uh, conclude that the temperature is the function of x, l, t, thermal conductivity k, thermal diffusivity alpha, uh, heat transfer coefficient h, and initial temperature T i. And uh, surrounding temperature T infinity. So that means, uh, if you express the general heat conduction equation in a dimensional form, then the temperature is the function of eight independent variables. Similarly, if I express in the non-dimensional form, so then the governing uh, the conduction uh, the differential uh, <coughs> governing equation becomes. Dou square theta by dou x square is equal to dou theta by dou tau, and uh, theta x zero is equal to one initial condition, and the non-dimensional uh, temperature uh, condition at the center of the plane. So non-dimensional temperature uh, equation, the boundary condition at the surface. So therefore, looking at the various variables involved in this, we can conclude. That theta is the function of non-dimensional x, biot number, and uh, four years number. So therefore, non-dimensional temperature is the function of x, that is the non-dimensional linear dimension, biot number, and the tau. So therefore, theta is only the function of uh, three variables now. So that is the essence. Uh, that is the importance of expressing uh, the dimensional uh, uh, quantities into dimensionless quantities so with the dimensional quantities we have to deal with the eight independent variables with the non dimensional um, associations we want to deal with only three independent uh, variables <coughs> so for this non dimensional uh, temperature uh, Distribution. Uh, the exact solution for infinite uh, plane one. So later part, uh, the same way you can also express it for the long cylinder and the sphere. Let us see only exact solution for inf infinite wall. So later part, we can also look into the the cylinder and the, the sphere. So an exact solution to this problem can be obtained by using the separation of a variables method given by. This equation. <coughs> um, this is theta of x t divided by theta i. 
it's nothing but uh, temperate dimensionless uh, temperature uh, uh, variation uh, in some books it is also given as uh, theta star so here the dimensionless temperature is the function of the biot number and the fourier number and the non dimensional linear dimension uh, x by n whereas delta n is nothing but the roots of the equations they are also called eigen values they are also called as the eigen values whereas delta n tan delta n is equal to the biot number to the bi and where n represents number of terms to be considered for uh, getting the solutions so as n varies to infinity the accuracy of the solution depends on the number of uh, terms are going to be considered the exact solution given above is valid for any time uh, that is 0 to infinity that for your number or tau you call uh, that varies uh, which uh, <coughs> have the range of from 0 to infinity and one thing we have to remember here more the number of terms considered the process of getting the solution is more tedious and complex so that is why so that is why an approximate solution uh, by <coughs> approximate solution of analytical solution for infinite plane wall we are always uh, little more interested than very exact solutions so approximate solutions how we can get it uh, the equation we have here the solution for one dimensional transient heat conduction involves a finite series this is nothing but the finite series which are difficult to deal with we know if you consider more number of terms the process of things becomes very lengthy laborious and difficult however <clears throat> the terms in the solutions converge rapidly with increasing time and for uh, four years numbers greater than 0.2 keep in the first term and neglecting all the remaining terms in the series results in an error under 2% and thus it is very convenient to express the solution using one term approximation this we call it as one term approximation and uh, <coughs> if you consider only um, first term the error that uh, going to occur in the solution is only under 2% therefore one term approximation is always uh, uh, generally acceptable for uh, the prediction of temperatures uh, in the uh, infinite uh, plane wall or slab plane wall or slab something long cylinder so therefore considering the above facts many have presented the solution of 1d transient heat conduction in the form of uh, <coughs> tabulated uh, results in the form of tables and the charts for any time um, for any time uh, four years number for any value of four year number f so keeping this one term approximation the hessler uh, who attempted to get the uh, solution of the transient uh, temperatures for large uh, <coughs> plane wall long cylinder and sphere uh, in the uh, graphical form for four years number greater than 0.2 they are known as transient temperature charts and uh, later part is familiarly it is called as hessler charts or transient temperature charts the hessler has attempted to present three charts associated with each geometry if you take any geometry like uh, infinite plane wall a long cylinder or the sphere for each geometry 
three charts have been presented one among them is to predict the center temperature of the geometry or middle plane temperature of the geometry at a given time the t and the second chart the second chart uh, <coughs> is presented to predict the temperature at any other locations at same time in terms of t not a third chart is to calculate total amount of heat transfer or total amount of uh, heat flow up to that time t so for uh, <coughs> plane we want to show this and this is the the graph uh, for uh, middle plane temperature to predict uh, in the <coughs> infinite slabs um, the y axis represent uh, uh, the dimensionless uh, temperature profile to predict the center line temperature t0 minus uh, t0 minus t infinity divided by ti minus t infinity is represented in the y axis in the x axis uh, is the variation of uh, four year number that is the dimensionless uh, time this is given by alpha t divided by l square alpha t divided by l square for iso line of um, biot number varies from 0.1 to infinity 0.1 to infinity and here biot number is defined as hl by k and this graph uh, taken from the <coughs> ninth edition of heat transfer data handbook by cp kodand kodandram <coughs> and similarly the second uh, graph uh, to uh, calculate the temperature other than the uh, center line other than the mid uh, middle line of the geometry so here uh, the y axis uh, uh, represent uh, uh, t x by l minus t infinity by t0 minus t infinity so this is the temperature dimensionless temperature uh, in terms of uh, central line temperature t0 and the x axis is drawn uh, in terms of biot number hl by k and you have the constant uh, iso lines for dimensionless uh, distance x by l so here uh, uh, the curve is uh, presented uh, from 0.0 to 1 so this curve the last curve particularly will represent the curve for predicting the, predicting the temperature at the surface of the plane wall or surface of the plane wall and the total thickness of the slab is taken as the 2l and for calculating the biot number you should remember that it is taken l that is the half the 2l or l and the third curve, third chart <coughs> is predicting the uh, heat transfer and the y axis Uh, presented the dimensionless uh, heat flow that is a q by q maximum or q by q zero and uh, versus uh, biot number square into uh, dimensionless uh, time uh, that is the four year number with the various uh, variations are the for the constant uh, values of uh, hl by k the same kind of graphs you going to observe uh, even in case of uh, <coughs> a cylinder and the um, sphere also so in order to understand in a better way uh, the usage of uh, charts for predicting the center line temperature uh, temperature other than the center line and the heat flow from the body for the given time we will take uh, examples and uh, under each uh, geometry and we will demonstrate how one can going to uh, use these charts <coughs>
so here the general principle whatever may be the, the problem whether the for lumpur system or the a problem can be solved by using the hessler charts or whatever the very basic uh, principle to be followed here that first you have to calculate for the given conditions first you have to calculate the biot number based on the characteristic length that characteristic length you know it is the ratio of volume by surface area either for the infinite slab or for the long cylinder or sphere or whatever it may be uh, case so once you calculate the biot number and if the biot number is less than 0.1 straight away one can use the lump system without using the the charts if the calculated basic definition of biot number that is with the use of lc then if it is coming more than 0.1 then you have to go for uh, using the charts this is the the basic one which you have to <coughs> use uh, always to judge whether lumpur system of analysis is sufficient to calculate or uh, transient uh, charts uh, can be used now let us uh, take a problem on um, slab a 50 mm thick iron plate the thermal uh, uh, properties are given here uh, is initially at uh, 225 degree centigrade so that means uh, the 2l the total thickness at 2l 50 mm is given therefore l you can calculate uh, which is equal to half of that and the other properties are given is initially at 225 degree centigrade that is initial temperature is 225 degree centigrade and uh, suddenly plate is immersed in the fluid medium maintaining at uniform temperature of 25 degree centigrade so that means the fluid media on either side of the plate is uh, t infinity 25 degree centigrade with the surface heat transfer coefficient uh, that is h is given 500 watt per meter square degree kelvin calculate the temperature at the center of the plate so t0 uh, 2 minutes after the start of cooling so time is given 2 minutes so that when 2 minutes 120 seconds temperature at the depth of uh, uh, 10 mm from the plate surface after the 2 minutes and temperature at the plate surface at uh, 2 minutes after the start of uh, cooling and uh, <coughs> energy removed from the plate per meter square during this time so before we uh, decide whether we want to use the uh, uh, transient charts in basic principle we have calculated the biot number so lc is going to be half of the thickness and therefore uh, biot number comes out to be 0.021 So since the biot number is greater than 0.1, hence lumpur system of analysis cannot be used. Uh, therefore, charts are to be used. Now, first is to find out the center line temperature Ti at x is equal to the center line means at x is equal to zero. That means x by L is equal to zero. And now biot number as per the chart. Biot number as per the chart. You can observe here so this is the chart uh, which i have already explained that uh, uh, this is the y axis to find out uh, what you call uh, <coughs> dimensionless uh, central line temperature and this is the four years number and uh, this curves are representing uh, the biot number one has to observe here the biot number as required by the graph you have to calculate hl by k these graphs are drawn by taking biot number as hl by k and similarly four years number alpha t divided by l square it is not lc square l square of course for the slab fortunately <coughs> your uh, l is same as the characteristic length that's 
another issue. So here, uh, the beauty of this uh, chart, if uh, time is given, then you can calculate the Fourier number and uh, uh, Biot number can be calculated and correspondingly you can uh, read what is the uh, dimensionless uh, center line temperature. So correspondingly you will, you will read the dimensionless temperature uh, value and hence you will calculate what is the T0. Or in reverse, if the center line temperature is given, so therefore you know the X value. For the given value of a biot number, you can read what is the uh, Fourier number corresponding to this obviously. So once you know the uh, Fourier number, you will calculate what is the time required for that. <coughs> now let us come back to this uh, the problem. So in this problem, uh, as per the chart requirement, you have calculated the biot number is 0.21. And uh, the four years number is calculated to be 3.41. So therefore, uh, here uh, 3.41. So 3.4, the 3 is here, 3.4 is here. So therefore, uh, uh, and the biot number is 0.21. So roughly here, you got it now. And now, uh, roughly it is uh, 0.54 if you want to know that you can also draw this figure here and therefore the value of uh, uh, dimensionless temperature value is comes out to be 0.54 so 0.54 right so Therefore, from the chart, you got uh, T0 uh, minus T infinity divided by Ti minus T infinity 0.54. So, therefore, the center line temperature at x is equal to 0 is comes out to calculated to be 133 degrees Celsius. Now, the temperature at the depth of 6 mm from the plate surface. So, that means... Uh, uh, 6 mm from the plate surface from that means from the surface it is given so therefore half the thickness is the 25 10 mm from the de at the depth of uh, uh, surface means uh, 50 25 minus uh, 10 15 15 divided by 25 it comes out to be 0. Uh, uh, 6 so therefore the chart 2 you have to use so for the biot number 0.21 and uh, chart number two, we have to go now. So, <coughs> so here um, the biot number point two one. So point two one. So two is here. Point uh, two one. You can you uh, read it and. Uh, And for the x by l value is a 0.6 so this is the curve here and this uh, curve so where this cuts so probably so here and uh, value comes out to be uh, 0.98 so this is the so each division here represents a point, point, uh, 0.02 values so it is at the eighth division uh, from point nine. There, sorry, fourth division. So therefore, uh, uh, four divi fourth division into point zero two gives uh, uh, point zero eight plus point nine. That means point nine eight. This you know. Anyhow, this need not to be explained too much. So, so therefore, from the graph, uh, one one can uh, get. So T of x t minus t infinity divided by T0 minus t infinity comes out to be 0.98 and therefore you can calculate uh, that T at uh, x by L is equal to 0.6 as the 130.8 degree 
Celsius. And the third point he had asked that the temperature at the plate surface. So the plate surface means x by L is equal to 1 for the biot number 0.21. Again you go back to the, the chart 2. So 0.21 biot number already have drawn and for uh, uh, x by L is equal to 1 that means at the surface. So one can draw a horizontal line here. So it comes out to be 0.9. So that means 0.9 is the, the dimensionless temperature <coughs> at the surface. Hence uh, 0.9 you have read it from the chart. Hence by using this you will calculate what is the, the temperature at x is equal to L or x by L is equal to 1 and it is calculated to be 122.2 degrees Celsius. Now you want to calculate what is the energy removed from the plate per meter square. So for this the third chart you have to use. So the third chart is for heat flow for infinite plate and uh, x axis is <coughs> a biot number square into Fourier's number and therefore uh, biot number 0.21 biot number square into Fourier's number it comes out to be 0.15 so for 0.21 and for 0.15 from this chart <coughs> so point <coughs> 0.15 so this is the point 0.1 and this is the point 0.2 so point 0.1 roughly you see here and uh, it is uh, the the value of uh, uh, biot number point 0.2 and therefore it uh, cuts here and therefore if you draw the horizontal line here so then uh, so q0 by Q maximum, sorry, Q by Q0 or Q by Q maximum is uh, comes out to be the 0.5. <coughs> so therefore, Q by Q0 is uh, read to be 0.5. And uh, for calculating Q, first you have to calculate the Q0 or Q maximum. Uh, for maximum heat flow, so obviously MCP delta T. So MCP delta T in the sense delta T means initial temperature to the, the surrounding temperature that is the maximum heat transfer that can take place. So MCP means M means uh, <coughs> rho into volume. So per unit area because the cross sectional area for the slab remains same. Therefore normally we express the heat transfer per unit area. So therefore area is nothing but the cross section into thickness. Thickness is the 2L here. So rho Cp into 2L into Ti minus T infinity comes out to be 33.84 megajoules per meter square. And therefore by using this dimensionless uh, heat transfer, one can calculate what is the amount of heat transfer or energy transfer for that uh, time, that means for the time up to 2 minutes from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 2 minutes we are going to get, we are going to get this amount of uh, the heat transfer. <coughs> and one must remember uh, that in uh, <coughs> 9th edition this the maximum uh, heat transfer uh, given as rho Cp into L Ti minus T infinity in uh, heat transfer data handbook by Bodhan Raman, but it is to be read as 2L not L. Similarly, we can also demonstrate this for the, the cylinder. Um, in cylinder, a long cylinder. A solid iron rod of diameter 60 mm initially at a temperature uh, 80 degree centigrade. So 
so diameter is given 60 mm so therefore its radius r not or r not whatever you call uh, is uh, comes out to be 13 to the power of minus 3 so initial temperature ti uh, suddenly dropped into oil bath uh, t infinity is uh, 50 degree centigrade the heat transfer coefficient is given 400 uh, uh, watt per meter square degree kelvin the property of the iron rod is given alpha thermal diffusivity 2 into 10 to the power of minus 5 and thermal conductivity k is given so for uh, calculating the energy transfer we need rho cp that is why you need to calculate rho cp which is uh, given by k by alpha it comes out to be 3 into 10 to the power of 6 here to find out the center line and the surface temperature after 10 minutes uh, immersion into the fluid so therefore t is equal to 10 minutes that is the 600 second and how long will it take a center line temperature to reach uh, 100 degree centigrade so you have to calculate what is the time required to reach the center line temperature 100 degree centigrade and the energy removed from the rod uh, it is not per meter square it should be meter okay uh, per meter actually you have to calculate okay now as the general uh, procedure uh, first you have to calculate the characteristic length for the long cylinder which is nothing but r naught by 2 so it comes out to be 0 0.015 meter and the biot number based on the lc is calculated to be 0 0.1 so 0 0.1 you can use a lumped system but when normally biot number exactly 0 0.1 it is not advisable to use the lumped system because error uh, going to be occur more so therefore it is always advisable even though biot number comes at 0.1 it is advisable to use the chart however let us uh, solve this problem by using the chart <coughs> so therefore here you must observe this that in cylinder Again, there are three charts here. One is center line temperature to find out, another uh, temperature other than the center line, and the heat transfer rate. And one must observe here that the biot number defined here it is HR naught by K, which is not same as HLC by K. You should remember, you should observe very carefully this. So it means that whatever uh, the graph being drawn here it is based on this definition of biot number hr by k and fourier number alpha divided by r naught square this you should be very very carefully understand and implement it so anyhow so obviously according to this chart requirement you have calculated uh, biot number is the 0.2 and the four years number is 13.33 now need to find out the center line temperature therefore i have to use the first chart so the four years number 13.33 so this is 8 9 10 11 12 13 so this is the uh, 13th uh, this is the 13.3 so 10 11 12 13 this is the 13 and uh, the biot number 0.2 so 0.2 you can see this intersection occurs at the first division itself so therefore the value comes out to be uh, 0.02 so therefore the central line uh, temp uh, dimensionless temperature profile is comes out to be 0 0.02 so therefore we can calculate uh, correspondingly what is the t0 so therefore uh, uh, central line temperature of the cylinder using uh, 0 0.02 this comes out to be 65 degree centigrade.
Celsius. So now temperature at the cylinder surface. Cylinder surface means when R is equal to R naught or R, R by R naught is equal to 1. Hence I have to use the second uh, chart. Second chart I have to use. So biot number already uh, calculated. So biot number. So biot number you know 0.2 and R naught R by R naught is the 1. So therefore in the chart. So 0.2. 0.2 here so it will meet here this is the point and uh, so from that point if you draw so obviously the dimension laser temperature profile or dimension laser temperature is uh, comes out to be uh, 0.9 this is 0.9 okay so therefore once you read this value as the 0.9 now we can calculate the temperature at R naught as 63.5 degree Celsius the third requirement when temperature uh, central line temperature 100 degree centigrade to get what is the time required so center line to achieve therefore I need to calculate the time so hence I have to use the first chart first chart so by at number anyhow 0 0.02 center line temperature required is uh, 100 so 100 minus 50 divided by 800 minus 50 it comes out to be 0 0.067 <coughs> 0 0.067 is the dimensionless uh, central line temperature and the biot number uh, uh, biot number uh, <coughs> 0.2 biot number 0.2 so now let us go so to the central line temperature so this is for long uh, cylinder central line temperature so <coughs> point, uh, zero, six, uh, seven. So, so three divisions means 0 0.06 so roughly around uh, um, 3.5 if you take it so 1 2 3 3.5 so now the value of uh, <coughs> uh, dimensionless uh, temperature uh, is uh, 0 0.067 and biot number 0 0.2 biot number is 0.2 is here okay biot number is 0 0.2 and uh, therefore uh, if you really draw uh, this is the 8 and uh, uh, this is the uh, 7 and therefore roughly it comes out to be this here so hence this is 8 and uh, this is 7 and it uh, this is this read out to be <coughs> 7.5 so your uh, dimensionless <coughs> time is a 7.5 so therefore 7.5 and that is equal to alpha t divided by r naught square so this the time is comes out to be 5.63 minute now energy removed from the cylinder per meter length uh, you have to calculate so biot number is uh, already calculated 0 0.2 biot number square into four year number is come to be 0 0.53 uh, uh, so put the chart so third chart you have to use for uh, uh, third chart and uh, this is uh, 
पॉइंट फाइव थ्री सो दिस इज पॉइंट वन पॉइंट टू पॉइंट थ्री पॉइंट फोर पॉइंट फाइव दिस इज दॉइंट फाइव पॉइंट फाइव थ्री रफली एंड पॉइंट टू इज दोट नंबर एंड ओवर हियर इट इज इंटरसेक्ट एंड नाउ इफ यू ड्रा आरजेंटल लाइन ओवर देर आरजेंटल लाइन ओवर देर so it uh, it cuts at uh, point uh, point 9 this is point 9 so dimensionless heat flow is uh, red as is red as point 9 and for long cylinder once again it is the mcp delta t so here cross section area into length is the volume so length of the cylinder is not given therefore the per unit length you can calculate so obviously it comes out to be 6.36 megajoules per minute and by using this dimensionless uh, uh, temperature uh, sorry dimensionless uh, heat uh, uh, the energy removed from the cylinder is calculated to be 5.37 mega joules per minute uh, sorry me meter 5.73 mega joules per meter already i mentioned that even though the biot number uh, comes out to be exactly 0.1 uh, one can check if i use the lumped system what will be the the above corresponding uh, results the results uh, corresponding to the above requirements what you will get you can uh, check it so it is expected uh, around uh, 15% variations uh, uh, occurs now similarly one we will try for uh, a sphere also um <clears throat> a potato is taken out from the cold stir storage unit where uh, temperature is minus 2 degree centigrade so that means initial temperature of the potato potato is assumed to be a sphere uh, initial temperature is uh, ti is a minus 2 minus 2 degree centigrade and the ambient temperature the t infinity is uh, uh, 25 degree centigrade estimate the time required for the center uh, of the potato to reach 15 degree centigrade so the center line temperature to reach 15 degree centigrade what is the time required we want to calculate and the properties of the uh, potato is given the diameter of uh, the potato is uh, 50 mm diameter so therefore radius is 25 mm and density cp k uh, and uh, h values are all given uh, so we not need to calculate uh, what is the amount of uh, heat transfer therefore you need rho cp otherwise you don't need rho cp so therefore rho cp Uh, is uh, given therefore alpha thermal diffusivity one can calculate it comes to be 2.08 into 10 to the power of minus 7 meter square per second first you have to find out <coughs> as per the general uh, rule uh, first you have to find out the biot number based on the characteristic length the characteristic length for the sphere is calculated to be r0 by 3 volume by surface area is calculated to be 0.083 meter and dense with that the biot number based on the lc uh, is obtained to be 0.167 which is greater than 1 hence lumped system of analysis is not applicable so we will go for the the chart now similarly the, the chart um for the sphere also three charts one for reading the the center line temperature another for another for the temperature other than the center line and another one for heat transfer so center line temperature let us take here also one can observe the biot number uh, is defined as hr by k whereas basic biot biot number definition if you know that is 
एच आर नाट बै थ्री बै के सो देर फोर अकॉर्डिंग टू दि चार्ट रिक्वयर्मेंट हि हाड डिफाइंड दि बजे नंबर एस एच आर बै के एंड सिमिलरली फोर इयर नंबर हि हाज डिफाइंड एस आलफा टी बै आर नाट स्क्वेर सो नौ बजे नंबर एस फर् दि चार्ट रिक्वयर्मेंट एच आर नाट बै के सो इट इस कैलकुलेट इट्स पॉइंट फाइव एंड दि सेंटर सेंटर लाइन टेम्परेचर रिक्वयर्मेंट इस फिफ्टीन डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड सो दे फोर डेमेंशन लेस टेम्परेचर ऐ हू कैलकुलेट फिफ्टीन मैनस् ट्वेंटी फाइव डिवेड बै मैनस् टू मैनस् ट्वेंटी फाइव पॉइंट थ्री सेवन सो डेमेंशन लेस टेम्परेचर वैल्यू we got is point three seven so point three seven so so point three point three two point three four so this is the point three seven and the bayot number is 0.5 so bayot number is 0.5 this is the value and from there if i draw a horizontal line if i draw a sorry vertical line from that point if you draw a vertical line so it comes out to be 0.78 even uh, 8 also 0.8 also will do so therefore uh, i read it as uh, 0.78 so <coughs> so 0.78 uh, you got it therefore time required you can calculate now uh, it comes out to be 39.06 minute now temperature at the surface i want to calculate therefore r by r not is equal to 1 so by it number 0.5 and the r not r by r not is 1 i have to use the second chart to calculate so therefore second chart i will go and the by it number is 0.5 um uh, okay uh this is point 4 point 5 this is the point 6 so this is the point 5 so point 5 i project it to the uh r by r not is equal to 1 r by r not is equal to 1 So this is the point five. Okay. So this is the point five. Point five, so it comes up comes out to be point seven six. Point seven six. So the dimensionless uh, temperature, uh, sorry, this uh, dimensionless uh, surface tem uh, dimensionless surface temperature comes out to be point seven six. So therefore, uh, <coughs> so point seven six is red. so hence the surface temperature at the cylinder is comes out to be 17.4 degree celsius now energy removed from the uh, potato you have to calculate so by at number 0.5 and by at number square into four year number is comes out to be 0.19 so therefore the third uh, chart i have to use so 
point uh, <coughs> one nine. So this is point one. This is point two. So roughly point two itself, we can read it. No problem. So then the value of a byte number is point five. A byte number is a point five. here so it comes out to be point 0.3 one can see here so if I draw a horizontal line here so therefore it comes out to be point 0.3 here point 0.3 here so therefore dimensionless heat we got it point 0.3 Point three, you got it. So, <clears throat> from the sphere, maximum heat transfer is nothing but volume into density is mass Cp into delta T. So, four by four by three pi r cube is rho Cp uh, value. You got it. And hence, substituting the Ti minus T infinity, you will get <clears throat> minus two point four kilojoules of heat. And therefore, your uh, <coughs> the um, the amount of energy transfer from this is calculated to be point two four into point uh, uh, sorry four point two four into point three. This comes out to be one point two seven. This comes out to be. 1.27 uh, <coughs> 1.27 uh, kilojoules 1.27 kilojoules it is printed as a uh, 4.24 it should be 1.27 kilojoules so negative sign you are getting it, it means that the energy flows in the uh, in the reverse radial direction that means heat flows from the surrounding to the system so therefore obviously heat flow in the opposite uh, radial direction hence um, <coughs> the amount of heat transfer is calculated to be 1.27 kilojoules per kg so this is the way uh, Hessler charts are going to be used for calculating the uh, temperature within the body when the <coughs> internal temperature gradients are uh, considered uh, this is the easiest tool one can use for calculating the, the temperature variations uh, in the body uh, from the center line uh, to the uh, surface uh, and also the amount of heat transfer during that period delta t thank you